Well, first there was the case of Joe Biden's classified documents hidden in his think tank. Then it turns out he had another stack of them next to his Corvette. Oh, and now there's more turning up all over the place, in his houses and in his offices everywhere. And here's a twist. Classified documents have even turned up at the house of former Vice President Mike Pence. What's going on here? Let's find out as we go busting the narrative. It's like an episode of The Oprah Winfrey Show. You get a classified document, and you get a classified document, and you get a big stack of classified documents. Well, look, it seems like everyone now has a stash of classified documents in their garage except me, mostly because, guess what? I don't have a garage. But first there was Trump, then Biden, now Pence. It's a lot to sort through. And now fair is fair, and Mike Pence holding of documents he wasn't entitled to should be investigated just as much as anyone else, whether that person is Joe Biden or Donald Trump. But I'll tell you what. There are two things that makes Joe Biden's case a lot different than anything else we've seen here, either from Mike Pence or Donald Trump. Number one, Joe Biden seems to be a serial offender in this case. And what is worse, his classified documents were in places that could have been accessed by the likes of Hunter Biden, who, of course, has been implicated in all sorts of chicanery involving foreign governments and corporations, with a strong whiff of corruption now hanging around the entire Biden family as a result. But here's the other more important thing I think you need to keep in mind when you look at the question of Joe Biden and his classified documents. It's this. Joe Biden seems to have been willing in the past to weaponize classified information against his political opponents by his own admission. What am I talking about? Well, just check this out. Let's turn on the Wayback Machine and go back to 1986, shall we? Now, remember, Joe Biden has been in politics as a long time, all the way back then, 35 years ago, in this profile in the New Republic magazine, which is, it should be noted, a reliably establishment left Washington, D.C. publication. In an interview with the New Republic, Joe Biden said that when he was on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee as the ranking Democrat, he, quote, twice threatened to go public with covert action plans by the Reagan administration that were, in his words, harebrained. In other words, more than 35 years ago, he was using classified information to basically leverage, at least he says, or claimed, to do so against the Reagan administration. Now, the big question, of course, is whether this ever became a habit. Did he still do this as senator, vice president, even, shall we say, president? Use or allow others to use classified information to his or their advantage? Well, it's a huge question, and a lot hinges this on this. And I mean, we have to, of course, preface this by saying that no one has proven any wrongdoing beyond the mishandling of documents, though that in itself is something that has earned ordinary citizens who aren't president or vice president jail time. But it is also worth noting that Joe Biden's vice presidential think tank at the University of Pennsylvania, where a lot of those documents were first found, has also been the recipient of some serious generosity on the part of the Chinese, more than $50 million from Chinese-linked entities since it opened, according to some reports. And what's more, that group, that think tank, hosted events for groups that promoted closer ties with China. And according to Alana Goodman at the Washington Free Beacon, the Penn Biden Center hosted a two-day boot camp for congressional staffers in June that encouraged closer ties with China on issues like green energy and academia, according to a source. This report went on to say that one of the organizing groups has an advisory board member who served as a spokesperson for the controversial Chinese tech giant Baidu. The event was held as anonymous donors from China have poured millions into the university, the report continued, and they said there were no posted security officials at the Biden Center during the June conference, just regular Penn staffers, and attendants, attendees were able to walk around the center unmonitored, unescorted, and make use of unused rooms for phone calls and other private work during the conference. Hmm. Who knows? 
Anyway, meanwhile, there is also the Hunter Biden question and whether Joe's son used information he should not have had access to to basically help out his own clients in places like, yes, Ukraine. Now, Brandon Devine, who revealed the Hunter Biden laptop story, notes an email Hunter sent to his business partner and fellow uh, Burisma board member, which basically she says was uncharacteristically precise, grammatical, well-crafted, and read more like a briefing note than any one of Hunter's usual crack-addled pleas for money that you find on the laptop. In the memo, Hunter wrote, quote, the strategic value is to create a land bridge for Russia to Crimea. That won't directly affect Burisma Holdings, but it will involve future UK exploration and utilization of offshore opportunities in particular. It will also result in further destabilization of UK nationally and for whatever government is in power. And the US will respond with even stronger sanctions. Those sanctions will threaten the tedious support of the EU, which does not have the political will to incur steep price increases in energy. Now, Devine notes that in point 22, Hunter instructed his business partner, Archer, to buy, quote, a burner phone, presumably to keep their conversations private. The email said and advised, buy a cell phone from 7-Eleven or CVS tomorrow, and I'll do the same. So is anything weird going on there? Could that memo have been informed by any of these documents? Well, we don't know. But we'll just have to wait and see what comes from the investigation, either by the special counsel or Republicans in Congress. But more importantly, for busting the narrative, whether it gets reported or swept under the carpet because it doesn't fit, yes, the narrative. Thanks for watching. I'm James Morrow. And to support this channel, please like, share, and subscribe below. And I'll see you next week for more Busting the Narrative. Bye-bye.